we're talking about virtualization and containerization. Now, there's been a lot of back and forth about this topic over the last two or so years. Containers burst onto the scene after virtual machines had really taken over. I mean, we, we got used to a virtual machine environment. That's how we ran our data centers. That's in fact, that's, that's how a lot of us ran our desktop environments. It was just an easier way to work that used fewer resources that could leverage what we had already purchased and, and, and uh, configured. And then containers came onto the scene and it gave us an even lighter way to deploy apps and services on hardware that we've already owned. But there's still a lot of confusion about what separates the two. Oh, we, for the purpose of this discussion, we've separated it into traditional virtualization and containers. What would you use as the differentiation between the two? How would you define traditional virtualization and how would you define a container? Yeah, you know, it's, it's fairly simple. I think a lot of the purists in this audience will, um, that, that, you know, followed Linux and Unix for a long time, you know, containers are really nothing new. They've been around. But to answer your question specifically, virtualization is a form for isolating your host um, OS uh, or abstracting your machine, whereas containerization is really a way for packaging your applications and ensuring that um, your services that you're deploying in containers have all the components that they need to be able to run um, in a host agnostic way. So regardless of the specific distribution you're running, if I gave you my code in a container, it's sort of guaranteed to run as long as you have the right container runtime. Um, so, so, you know, to, to um, be more clear on that, containers are a way for packaging and distributing um, application code, whereas uh, virtualization is really for a way for abstracting and uh, virtualizing the hardware and allowing uh, a guest uh, OS uh, to co-reside with other operating systems on a machine. So if you look at it that way, they really sort of serve two different purposes. Um, you know, uh, virtualization when it was first invented was uh, really uh, targeted toward server consolidation and getting more, um, you know, utility and uh, resources, um, utilization out of your servers. And somewhere along the way, um, I guess, as people tried to get more agile in software deployment, um, sort of started, uh, I guess, uh, using virtualization as a way to even package and deploy their applications as a big monolithic stack. You see tools like Chef and Puppet um, that were used for that. And what containers really do is sort of shed a light on um, that and, and kind of highlight that that's a wrong way for packaging and distributing applications. And let's just focus on the application code. And uh, people that are embracing the DevOps uh, movement to get more agile, um, you know, it really resonates with them. And I think this is why so many people have been so excited by containers, because it does seem, I mean, if you chart it, from where containers started, uh, virtual machines started, you know, really in the data center, trying to take that rack of pizza boxes down into one big box that could be spun up and down as necessary. It does seem to be a logical progression of creating just full stack boxes that you use a tiny bit of its potential to run a single service to, okay, I'm going to run a super lightweight container that has everything I need and it's, it's agnostic. But there is still... This, this push, especially from companies like VMware, from companies like Microsoft that say, look, there's, a room, there's room for containers and there's room for virtualization. Where do you see the trend in the enterprise? As you, as you look at what we've been doing with virtualization recently and what we're doing with containers, is, is there going to be a natural winner or are these two technologies that are going to coexist? I think they'll coexist, and I don't think it really is an either or. I think what's going to eventually happen is virtualization uh, will continue to exist as a way for uh, still what it was originally invented for, which is to achieve uh, greater server utilization. Virtualization does a great job in uh, taking, you know, um, like you mentioned, a, a rack of servers and providing a uh, sort of a, a big pool of compute and uh, uh, capacity, memory capacity, in which I can run compute. But I think that's where it will stop, which is um, people in the managing the data center, typically from the you know the the traditional IT side, will continue to use virtualization to manage their machines. But I don't really think in the long term virtualization will be a viable tool to manage the deployment um, and uh, provisioning of applications. And that's where containerization and tools like Docker will really start taking over. And again, um, you know the 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 push for that is even beyond just whether containers are um, you know, more efficient than virtualization. It's more about empowering DevOps and giving them the ability to, um, in a very CI CD continuous way, deploy their applications 
in, into the production infrastructure. Uh, let me put it this way, you know, there's not a programmer out there or in your audience that likes to think of application provisioning in terms of machines and virtual uh, virtual machines. Um, you know, I'm a programmer. Um, I would much rather, if I had to give you a piece of code, um, uh, you know, if we were all had the same distribution, ideally, I'd just give you a tarball, but we don't. And I don't know which Linux distribution you're running. So it is more ideal for me to uh, give you a container and uh, to deploy my service as opposed to, um, you know, using Chef or Puppet and giving you a uh, virtual machine. Um, you know, it just doesn't make sense for a programmer to go through all that. So to answer your question, uh, virtualization will exist, uh, but it's more of an IT tool to manage hardware. And for people that were using virtualization as a way to manage and deploy applications, that I think definitely is going to go away and be and taken over by containers. I love that distinction. I think that's exactly what my audience needed to hear because I'm like you. I think that there's there's room for both. Uh, containers are great. I love them. They're very lightweight, but they will not replace virtual machines for certain applications and vice versa. However, one of the things I'd love to get your commentary on is where do you see the transition? Has enterprise figured out what works best on virtualization and what works best in containers? Is, is that common knowledge or is that something that, that, that you still see IT managers trying to suss out? I think uh, for the majority of the, uh, you know, the, the planet out there, I think it's uh, still in the very early stages and people are trying to suss that out. Um, look, if, you, if there's uh, what I'm going to call you know, brownfield applications, if you have legacy applications um, already deployed in virtual machines, there's very less motivation to go in and rip that out and use containers for it. You're not going to take your email servers or you know, big SAP deployments and run them in containers at all. I mean, I see a few people trying to do that, but that, that's using containers for the wrong purpose. Um, applications like VDI and things like that, for however long they're going to exist, will continue to run in virtual machines. Um, where containers are really being in you know, uh, embraced in the enterprises are, um, you know, the greenfield applications where people are really going cloud native, um, whether they're going to public cloud or building private clouds, people that are deploying either platforms as a service, uh, running big data type of uh, jobs in containers, uh, that's where containers really uh, make sense, um, where they're uh, deploying, you know, um, web applications, be it like WordPress, um, we see that a lot. Um, we see in uh, high performance computing, people using containers a lot just because there's so much churn and there's uh, so much uh, desire for people to be more agile. Um, you know, for if I, if I were to parse your question the following way, um, any type of application deployment that is really empowered by DevOps uh, with a need for um, agility and fast changes and being able to deploy new code into the um, you know, uh, staging to production pipeline faster, that's where you'll start seeing a lot of containers being picked up. 